Okay, so this is the uh, FaceBase website, and I'm assuming most of you, has anybody uh, never been here uh, to the website? Because uh, it seems like most people have at least uh, checked it out. If you've never seen the website, feel free to kind of give a thumbs up. But, um, okay. So we uh, start with uh, a couple of ways to get into the data from the homepage. I'm going to go over some of the things we have on the home page and then go over uh, parts that are available on the other parts of the website aside from the data repository itself. And then Rob is going to do a deeper dive into, into the data. But um, there's a lot more uh, that FaceSpace has to offer as a resource. And so um, one thing I want to point out is that we did in the uh, last uh, uh, late winter, we did a usability uh, testing cohort where uh, we did various interviews with people of varying experience levels uh, and relationships to face space. And as a result of that, we have um, some really great information for improving the usability of the website and the homepage. And uh, so the effort in this uh, upcoming six months is going to be um, putting out, you know, design, redesigning and putting out an updated website. So we're really excited about that. And um, so this information will change, but uh, it's still going to be like this for um, a while. And and most of the other uh, uh, information after I go over the website itself will uh, continue. So. Um, Right here we have this big button that says search all data sets. And so this just takes you straight to the repository with no filters. It just gives you everything that we have, which I'll just give you a quick view. Um, as you can see, it's 967 records. Uh, some things that you can, see, you can tell uh, by release date, it goes from the newest data down uh, to the older data. Uh, in that order. And uh, there are different um, filters on the side. Rob's going to uh, tell you more about that. But um, let me go here. But we also have these little links um, that we kind of call hot links. And they go to pre filtered uh, searches where uh, a couple of the filters are already defined for you. So one of the, uh, here's one example, uh, which is mouse and uh, the experiment type imaging assay. So as you see, there are two of these uh, facets that are already selected, but you can keep uh, changing that, adjusting as you'd like to drill down to something that you're interested in or that you're looking for in particular. Uh, we also have this uh, introductory video. So th this is uh, newer. Uh, I think we just released this a couple of months ago. And this uh, provides a uh, really good overview of what is the face based consortium. And, um, and I highly recommend uh, checking that out. If you haven't, it's less than five minutes, so it doesn't take that long. We also have a convenient button here if you're interested in contributing data to um, face space and hence to the greater uh, craniofacial research community, then uh, you can use this button. This will take you to the submitting page, which I'll go over um, uh, in a little bit later. We also have uh, this mouse data summary. Now this is on the home page. It also is on its own page, which might be a little easier to navigate. And I'll show that as well when I go into the navigation. But the, um, the point of this is to show a snapshot of the data that's available. So to just kind of go over that different axes, we have different anatomical regions up top here. And then we have different age stages here. And then these boxes are related to the different assays. So, um, this is another thing that we are redesigning to make it a little easier to use. But for the most part, it gives you an idea um, of what kind of data is available per uh, time point and anatomical region. 
And just by uh, clicking one of these boxes, it'll take you into um, the repository with that information filtered for you. And again, you can adjust from there. Uh, just a point, uh, if you wanna investigate this, that uh, this scrolls to the right. This is one of the things we're going to uh, make a bit more user-friendly. And, um, but it's very uh, comprehensive. This is just for mouse at this point. Uh, one of, the, of our future efforts is going to be expanding mm -hmm. this to the other three sheets. Does somebody have a question? Okay. And then further down, uh, we have a, just three uh, featured resources. And um, this, this is a very interesting one from the Chai Lab. It's the Mouse Skull Flyter. And this is a YouTube video that, um, I have to move my Zoom thing that provides a tour, basically, of the mouse skull color-coded. And so this is a, uh, a really interesting uh, view of the mouse skull. And it has some nice music too. And then we have um, this uh, human data set of 3D white light photogrammetry images. Uh, we also have this uh, atlas of zebrafish um, from uh, Shannon Fisher and Matt Harris. And, but there are many other resources available in the resources hub. And this link is here. I'll be going through that in a minute. Um, down here, we have our publication spotlight, which is a little carousel of our more recent papers. You can view um, all of the publications uh, related to face space. And if you uh, do uh, use face-based data in a paper, we highly recommend that you let us know at help at spacebase.org, or you can go to the contact link uh, and let us know, and, and we'll be happy to uh, post it here. And here we have our news, including our agenda. It's our latest news about the boot camp. You can also sign up for our mailing list. Now, um, just to point out that if you uh, add an account, you um, will basically be on our mailing list. So um, the way to sign up for an account is here, uh, if you haven't already. And I'm actually going to copy this link and do this incognito. So you can kind of see what that looks like. This is our uh, authentication is powered by Globus. So this is a, um, a kind of page um, that's connected to uh, the Globus uh, application. And basically the easiest way to go is if your organization has been here and many people's uh, uh, institutions are already in here. You can also, um, if that's not available for you, you can, uh, you can go by ORCID ID either by typing there or by clicking here. You can also sign in with Google. If none of those options are good for you, then you can use, uh, you can create a, a Globus ID, which is basically a username password combination. Um, and so uh, it's just a matter of uh, clicking through and then you have the typical consent uh, permissions that you just say, okay, and then, um, uh, just a sh very short form, we just ask for a project, or, well, your institution, and then a project that you're working on. And then um, we approve it, and once you approve it, then you're added to our mailing list. This also gives you access to um, being able to use the bulk export option that Alejandro is going to go over later. And then um, it also uh, is required in order to request human data. So just um, to go through the information architecture we have, data browser, that basically takes you into the um, data repository itself. So here we have um, data sets that are categorized by organism here. You can also uh, check out our new image uh, imaging data search. So this 
uh, focuses strictly on imaging data files and allows you to preview them uh, with the thumbnails here, and then also to be able to filter uh, just on the imaging data using uh, the sidebar, which uh, Rob is going to go over in more detail. So uh, this was just launched uh, in the past month. Um, we also have gene summaries. These are a handy kind of at a glance uh, overview of information uh, by gene. So So here's just one example that includes some uh, illustrations that are across a couple of age stages. Um, Condorblast has Meckel's cartilage. And, but you can uh, explore through there and, uh, and find a, uh, a lot of other genes. Yeah, you can see the list of genes here. If you wanna see more, you just click show more. And then another thing I wanted to point out is image navigation under here. And right now we have one for wild type mouse and wild type zebra. Uh, excuse me, zebrafish. And um, what's cool about this is that it will basically allow you to click through different anatomical regions that are color coded. So you see here, now I'm using my mouse, I can manipulate this and just, you know, turn it any which way I want. And then over here, is a list of all the uh, annotated regions that are color coded. So for example, you can click through and see, okay, so that's this. And uh, kind of manipulate it around, move it around. And it's a, it's a really handy way to check out the uh, different regions there. And then you can click on the term itself and below it, uh, the anatomy record for that region will appear. And then any data that is related to that anatomical region will appear uh, in this section. All right now there's one, and it's uh, part of the interactive zebrafish craniofacial atlas. Now I would just uh, make a note that this is actually an iframe. So in order to click through on any of these, it would be better if you did a right click and then open a new tab. And then you can see the data set that's uh, connected. So again, Rob's going to go tell you more about uh, this part of the face face experience. And you can go uh, from zebrafish back to mouse again. Now, under here is where you can find information about submitting data to faces. And I'll just go over this briefly, since this is more centered towards users. But um, we do accept, we had two, two phases of face space that were focused on a, a hub and spoke uh, setup where we had the hub and then we had uh, like 10 projects that were uh, uh, uploading data. But in face space phase three, now we're open to the community. So we are actively looking for more data to complement um, the repository. And we have uh, a video that will uh, describe the process. We um, have a big button here that'll take you to the data submission form. And uh, Rob will go over that more in the data submitters track. But um, in this section also are the current data priorities, which um, we, we like to complement what we have, but there are also gaps that um, would make it even more useful to the community. So this kind of lists some of that. Under data access, you can find information about our data access policies. So there's basically open access and controlled access. And controlled access is uh, for any identifiable human data. And any of that data is, um, is restricted and protected. And, you know, we have a very strict, um, secure process for requesting that data. 
and um, and then basically everything else is open access. We have terms of use for open data that you can check out uh, with this link. And uh, this is how to request human data. Alejandro is going to go over that later. And this is the how to cite us page. I'm going to go over that in more detail a little bit further down. I just want to um, kind of show you a couple more things under the resources before I turn this over to Rob. Aside from that, we have some things under about that'll tell you uh, more about face space. You can uh, check out uh, the different actual face space projects, uh, both from the previous phases and our new uh, community phases, uh, community projects. And uh, you can check out our publications here. We have our news and then help is where you can find links to documentation about using the data browser. And this uh, will take you um, to some links that will go into the wiki, which is where we include uh, our more detailed documentation about submitting data. And training is basically about boot camps like this. Under resources, we have this one page called the resources hub that basically lists uh, all the uh, resources that we have. Uh, so we have the uh, mouse data summary, which is the full page version of what I showed you on the home page. So it's a little easier to interact with that there. Um, and we also, let me scoot back. We also have the mouse anatomy page. And this is uh, a really great resource. It shows um, at E9.5, a side view of these color-coded anatomical regions. And you can use these arrows to click through and check out how these regions change over time. And we also have um, these drawings that represent cell lineages down here. Uh, under human, we have the 3D facial norms database, which is a very popular uh, resource. And this actually allows you to um, search uh, by, you can drill down to very specific uh, uh, attributes here. Um, And you can find summary statistics. So this is uh, what a lot of people are, are uh, come to this resource for, are these uh, caliper facial measures and 3D facial measures. And going back here, we also have under this menu item, we have a lot of these um, featured resources uh, that are kind of easier to access this way. So here's the human genomics analysis interface. And this is uh, data that you don't have to go through the uh, process in order to request human data as it's de-identified, but it goes through, um, it provides uh, different analysis for uh, different human data that you can uh, basically browse through this way. And okay, so I think my time is up here. So um, if you have any other questions about uh, the site, uh, please let me know. Uh, are there any questions right now before we move on? Okay, great. Um, and feel free to use the chat. Feel free to ask questions as we go. We do have a Q&A section uh, towards the end of this user's track. But for now, I'm going to hand it off uh, to Rob.